Well, welcome to another video from Aquis Biomante. Now what we've got here is um, showing you a uh, the dismantlement of a 1950s, late, late 40s to early 60s um, streamline soda siphon. So what we've got here is Here's an original example. This is one that we've actually reconditioned and it's now fully working. Here we are. And it's all covered in condensation because it's been in the fridge. So that's what one looks after it's been reconditioned. Again, let's see pretty cold. Notice it's got this chrome plated sort of beak spout, chrome cover and in there that's the early type of um, uh, carbon dioxide charging feature and that would take, usually that would have been supplied with a metal key but you can equally use one of the slightly later plastic ones like that or an early one because they they use the same thread form in the end from the 1920s right through to 1981 so anyway we've covered this in another video so there's my soda siphon that's a completed item and it's been charged up in the fridge that was done last night and cheers to you That makes pretty good soda water. But what you'll probably see is if you go to a junk shop or get one on eBay, is something like this. A rather manky old seal in the top. This one's all heavily cracked. There it is. This is the wrong head for this body, but this this body should have red stripes slightly similar to these. This is a slightly later body but this is in nice condition and it was just a hand and that would go on top like that. And this head is from one that we got in about a week ago and it's just been dismantled and cleaned and then dry reassembled for the purposes of this video. So what you've got is head, it's been partially cleaned etc and that's how you'd find it. So to disassemble, normally it wouldn't be as clean as that inside because we've been cleaning it. To disassemble, you take off, unscrew this, frequently they're jammed on and you have to be very careful not to shear the plastic. Remove this, again these can be quite seized so you need to be careful, carefully remove that. Sometimes I use a piece of leather on those with a pair of grips just to hold it without marking it. Take that out. That comes with the hold down spring. That holds down the plunger seal inside. And then we can take off these two clamshell pieces like that. And those we'll put to one side and those will be cleaned later separately. And that shows the head. And you can see the similarities between uh, this head which is from the 19, late 40s, early 50s, and the earlier type D. So there we are. You can see how they developed. Stylistically, there have been a few changes, but not much. This is one from a scrap siphon, but you can see that they look pretty similar. So, and they've retained the feature whereby the control arm is riveted onto the head, and that has to be drilled out. So I've, I've done that previously and I've reinserted the rivet so we can just push that out like that. There's a copper rivet that's been hollowed out so you can take the arm out. There's the arm. And remove the plunger seal from inside. And this one was taken out earlier and has been partially stripped so there's no seal in the end and the o-ring is missing. After we've reconditioned it, 
that's what it would look like. New O-ring, it's correct size, and we've replaced the rubber seal in the end with a modern one. So we reconditioned those. Okay, and then what you probably noticed in this one is there's a piercing pin in the center and a rubber seal around there. Those need to be taken out because those allow those allow the gas to go in but not escape and similarly the water. So what you do is you get my all purpose tool and just undo the little there, circular part and then using a pair of pliers grab this seal and take that out. Usually they get stuck in and they're virtually welded in but they're also virtually disintegrating and inside there this recess is empty because I haven't reassembled it fully but what we'd have found is the piercing pin seal which consists of a pin and that will puncture the carbon dioxide capsule and it's got a hollow pin which goes down to a threaded socket in there and then behind that is a spring and that tensions the whole thing up and from within the head looking in there this special screw goes through a hole from behind from within the head and goes into the underside of that like that with the shell of part of the head between the two and the spring tensions it and what is quite interesting about these is the rubber seal which holds everything together is in here and it's usually totally disintegrated which is why they don't work and the passage of the gas would have been through the center of the pin down the core down the center of here and if you can just about see it there's a cross drilled hole here that goes through both sides and meets up with the bore hole and inside the head there's a special valve seat which sits on this would have sat on the rubber remains of this forming the seal and when the cartridge is pushed in what it does is it pushes down on the end of the pin and pushes against the spring and that allows this part to move down into the head to reveal that little hole and allows the carbon dioxide gas to come through and then when the, the carbon dioxide capsule is removed this moves forward and rests on the seal in there keeping the carbon dioxide in the bottle and also the water so what we do here at our crispy mente is we disassemble and replace that seal with a modern one and that's specially done for us custom made part to replace that we actually retain the screw but we did, needn't do so that's for originality purposes but we replace the seal in there with a new one which works and that's what happens here we also have a new rubber seal which we've had we acquire we have manufactured for us which goes in there to replace the original one which is usually heavily degraded and also we have modern versions of this which go in there now these ones use a slightly thicker than normal seal now this one's uh, you can see that's the standard thickness and that's the one that we have produced these um, 1940s to 50 ones require a thicker seal otherwise the skirt of the head here actually grinds down on the top of the, the shoulder of the bottle and wears away the chrome plating so that's necessary otherwise you could use our standard one to all intents and purposes they're the same diameter anyway and they look pretty much the same it's just they're thicker so those are made for us um, 
Right, well that's, that's really it. We take all the parts out, clean them, and then reassemble them. So that's how it would have looked when it came in, and that's how it looks once it's been reconditioned. And that's fully working, as is evidenced by me having a drink, because it's hot. And that produces nice soda water. And that should be, well, that will hold the pressure in there, in the fridge for at least three days, frequently up to seven. But you must remember it is 19, well, originally 1920s technology, basically, that's been updated a bit and restyled. Um, that's everything. Thanks very much for watching this video. This has been brought to you by Acuspivante. And I hope you enjoyed it, found it informative. <laughs>